Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now continuing on our discussion with propositions, uh, in this video I'm going to introduce a tool that we use when talking about propositions in order to kind of figure out what's going on in a compound proposition. And that tool is called a truth table. So just a little background. A truth table is a tool used to see the truth values of a compound proposition. Now to construct a truth table, we exhaust all possible truth values of our simple propositions and use that to determine all possible truth values of our compound propositions. Okay, So let's take a look at what this means. Let me make, I'm going to make a little truth table here. Uh, probably more than I need. Oh, That's not very good, is it? Let me try that one more time and we'll just go with it however it comes out. Well, okay, about the same, but a little bit better, right? So let's just say I have these two propositions, P and Q. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break anything down into my simplest propositions, and I'm going to write them first on my truth table. And we're going to test a couple of compound propositions here as well. I want to know about, um, using our connectives from the last video, I want to know about P or Q. I want to know about P and Q. I want to know about, let's do P or not P. Let's look at Q or not Q. And let's look at P and not P. Now, for those of you who have seen logic before, these last three should be pretty obvious. Um, but I want to do it to illustrate some definitions in a second here. But back to where we were. Starting off a truth table, you're always going to write your simple propositions first, and you're going to exhaust all possible combinations of P and Q being true and false. Now, the way you're going to do that is, whatever the first one is, you're just going to alternate true and false, true and false. Now it kind of increases exponentially. If you have these two, if you just have one proposition, it can only be true and false. If you have two propositions, we can have P and Q are both true. P is false and true is false. P is true and Q is false. And P is false and Q is false. So you see what I did here? I just alternated true false in my P, and then I did um, two trues in Q and two falses in Q. Now if I had a third one, let's say R, I would need to write true false, true false again and I need to do true, true, false, false again, and in R I would have four trues followed by four falses. Okay, so you're always doubling the amount, with each new proposition, you're doubling the amount of trues before you switch to falses, and the last proposition will always be completely trues and then completely falses. This is a, a good way to organize it. And you'll notice that it'll always be a multiple of two, right? Uh, in fact, it'll be two to the power n, where n is the number of propositions. That's how many rows I'm going to need to have, right? With one p, I just have two rows, with two propositions, P and Q, I have four rows. And with three propos propositions, I'll have two to the third, or in other words, eight rows. All right, now back to the task at hand. I want to look at some of these other compound propositions. Now, P or Q. Remember, that means P is true or Q is true. Now, I can have, of course, we talked about in the last video, that also includes the case where they're both true, right? As long as one of them are true, this is satisfied, this or, right? Our or is not exclusive in any way whatsoever. So. This first one, of course, is going to be true. Here I have Q is true, so P or Q is true. My third line, I have P is true, so this is true. And in my fourth line, they're both false, right? This is the only case in which P or Q is false. We have false here. Right? P and Q, and that means that either P, or sorry, P and Q are both true, right? So if one of them is false, then P and Q is going to be false. Now, those ones are the easy ones. And we can see that, of course, P and Q is much more restrictive than P or Q. P or Q is going to be true a lot of the time because we have so many options, right? There's only the one case here where this ends up being false. In that same case, P and Q is false, but P and Q is also false in these two kind of intermediary cases where I have one true and one false. Now, these last three, pretty easy. I have this P or not P. So what I'm saying is either P is true or P is not true. Well, that's going to be true all the time, isn't it? We see in the f first and third I have P is true, and in the second and fourth I have P is false, which is the second side, not P. 
And that's the same thing here with Q. Q or not Q, that's always going to be true as well, right? Either Q is true or Q is not true. Both of these can be seen also as just as falling from our definition of a proposition. We said a proposition is well defined, which means it always has a value, and those two values are true and false. Now what these two compound propositions are saying is either P is true or P is false, and it's saying either Q is true or Q is false. So these are always going to be true because we know that these are propositions. Now this last one, P and not P, well that means that P is true and P is false which of course is ridiculous, right? We know this is always going to be false. Always going to be false. And the reason I had these last three examples is I want to go over a couple of basic definitions that we usually include in this material. I've listed them here. We see, we, or we call two propositions equivalent if and only if they have the same truth tables. Now if and only if, we'll get into bijections later, but that means that they're called equivalent if they have the same truth tables and if they have the same truth tables, they're called equivalent, right? This statement goes in two directions. So we can see here that P or not P is equivalent. I'm going to use these three lines. This is an equivalent statement to Q or not Q. Okay, this is equivalent. Now, a tautology is a proposition that is true for every assignment of truth values to its components. We see that both P or not P and Q or not Q are tautologies, right? These tautologies, these are universal truths. These are statements that are always going to be true. It doesn't matter if P is true or false. It doesn't matter if Q is true or false. These are both going to be true all the time. And kind of complementary to that, we have a contradiction is what we call a proposition that is false for every... Oh, a diamond, every assignment of truth values to its components, right? So in other words, or, or for example, uh, this last column, this P and not P, this is what we call a contradiction. It's something that's never true, right? We can never have both P and not P, right? That's the logical definition of what a contradiction means. Okay, so this is truth tables, and you'll notice that I've, I've included these videos in kind of two different sections. These um, propositions and truth tables lead very nicely into logic and methods of proof, and they also lead very nicely into um, basic set theory and proving properties of set theory using truth tables. So we'll see a correspondence over there in a few sections in set theory as well. Okay. All right, now in the last video in this section with propositions, I'm just going to go over some of the basic properties of propositions. Um, these are kind of algebraic type properties. Um, they're very intuitive, so I'm just going to kind of define them. They're commonly seen in textbooks. I'll talk a little bit about why it is that they're true. All right, we'll see you there.